German Campaign Plans and Initial Movements, June, August 1942. In the summer of 1942, Hitler shifted his focus east, setting his sights on the oil-rich Caucasus region and the industrial city of Stalingrad. This was part of Hitler's larger strategic plan, codenamed Case Blue, which sought to cripple the Soviet Union's capacity to wage war by seizing key economic resources and territories. Initially, the German forces achieved significant territorial gains, marching virtually unopposed through vast stretches of the Soviet Union. Stalingrad was a prime target due to its status as a major industrial city on the banks of the Volga River, the primary waterway and transportation route in the Western Soviet Union. Capturing Stalingrad would cut the Soviet Union off from its southern territories and deal a severe blow to Soviet morale. In June, German troops began their eastward push, advancing toward Stalingrad. By August, they reached the outskirts of the city, poised for the upcoming offensive. Little did they know, the battle for Stalingrad would prove to be one of the most brutal and devastating in history. Initial German advance and bombing, the 23rd of August, 1942. By the late August 1942, German forces, led by General Friedrich Paulus's 6th Army, stood at the gates of Stalingrad. It was the beginning of a brutal siege that would last for over five months. The attack commenced on the 23rd of August, with a massive aerial bombardment by Luftwaffe's powerful air fleet, targeting the city's defenses and residential areas. The bombing campaign turned much of the city into rubble, causing severe damage to infrastructure and inflicting heavy civilian casualties. The heavy bombing of the city was led by Wolfram von Richthofen's Luftflotte IV, and a shocking 1,000 tons of bombs were dropped in just 48 hours, wreaking havoc. Approximately 90% of the city's housing stock was reduced to rubble, and the civilian casualties were tragically high. Notably, even in the midst of such devastation, some factories, including the Stalingrad Tractor Factory, continued production. It churned out T-34 tanks until German forces breached the plant. The 369th Croatian Reinforced Infantry Regiment was the only non-German unit selected by the Wehrmacht to join the assault on the city, under the banner of the 100th Jaeger Division. Many civilians fled the city during the battle, a small number were evacuated by the Soviets, and more than 40,000 were forcibly transported to Germany as slave workers. Stalin, determined to protect the city, directed all available troops to the east bank of the Volga, with some troops journeying from as far away as Siberia. In an unfortunate turn of events, regular river ferries were quickly annihilated by the Luftwaffe, which then targeted the slow-moving troop barges being towed across the river. On the 23rd of August, a massive German air raid resulted in a firestorm, causing catastrophic destruction and loss of life. Stalingrad was reduced to a landscape of rubble and burnt ruins, with 90% of the living space in the Voroshilovsky area destroyed. Yet the Soviet resistance remained unbroken. Soldiers and civilians alike were drafted into the defense effort, with men, women, and even children fortifying the city, digging trenches, and fighting fires. Following the aerial assault, the German forces began their ground attack. The city's defenders, comprised mainly of the Soviet 62nd and 64th armies, were heavily outnumbered and outgunned. Nevertheless, they mounted a fierce resistance, turning the city ruins into a death trap for the advancing German forces. The battle quickly turned into a war of attrition, with both sides suffering heavy casualties. Despite their initial success, the Germans struggled to make further progress. The shattered buildings and narrow streets of Stalingrad offered perfect conditions for defensive warfare, allowing the Soviet defenders to bog down the German troops in bloody street-by-street -street and house-by-house -house fighting. This phase of the battle highlighted the determination of both sides, setting the stage for the grueling struggle that would follow in the coming months. The battle for Stalingrad was far from over, with both sides preparing for the long and bitter fight ahead. The onset of urban combat in mid-September marked a new phase in the Battle of Stalingrad. As the German forces penetrated deeper into the city, the fighting intensified. The urban landscape of Stalingrad transformed into a brutal battleground, 
with both sides engaging in close-quarter combat amidst the rubble of the devastated city. The Soviets capitalized on the city's complex layout, using the ruined buildings and rubble-strewn streets to their advantage. They set up strongholds in factories, houses, and even sewers, launching surprise attacks on German forces and then disappearing back into the city's ruins. This form of warfare, often referred to as Rattenkrieg or Rat War by the Germans, was grueling and disorienting for the invaders. The tenacity of the Soviet forces, combined with the challenging urban environment, slowed the German advance considerably. Notable points of conflict during this period included the Grain Elevator, a massive concrete structure that was heavily defended by a small group of Soviet soldiers, and the Mamayev Kurgan, a strategic hill overlooking the city. The Grain Elevator was a remarkable site of resistance during the Battle of Stalingrad. As the urban combat phase commenced, the massive concrete grain elevator, located in the southern part of the city, became a focal point of intense fighting. This structure, which towered over the largely ruined cityscape, was a strategic location due to its vantage point and formidable defenses. The walls, made of reinforced concrete, provided a robust shelter from which the Soviets could withstand heavy artillery fire. A small group of Soviet soldiers, varying in reports from a few dozen to several hundred, held out against repeated German assaults for several days in September 1942. The defenders, despite being outnumbered and outgunned, managed to repel the German forces time and again, causing considerable casualties. The story of the brave defenders was utilized extensively for Soviet propaganda purposes, serving as a morale booster for the embattled Red Army and the Soviet people. The grain elevator's ruins still stand in Volgograd, the modern name of Stalingrad, a testament to the ferociousness of the battle and the resilience of its defenders. Mamayev Kurgan was another site of monumental significance during the Battle of Stalingrad. This is a high ridge overlooking the city and the Volga River, which made it a strategic point both sides fought hard to control. When the Battle of Stalingrad commenced, the German forces quickly realized the importance of Mamayev Kurgan due to its high elevation. It offered a comprehensive view of the city and the surrounding areas, making it an ideal location for artillery placements. As the Germans advanced into the city in September 1942, the fighting over Mamayev Kurgan intensified. The hill changed hands multiple times, with both Soviet and German forces making desperate attempts to secure this vantage point. The intensity of the fight left Mamayev Kurgan heavily scarred. The hill was riddled with trenches, foxholes, and the remnants of strong points, while its surface was turned into a moonscape by the heavy shelling. The battle for Mamayev Kurgan finally ended in January 1943, when the Soviet forces retook the hill during Operation Ring, the final Soviet offensive aimed at eliminating the encircled German forces in Stalingrad. Today, Mamayev Kurgan is the site of a memorial complex commemorating the Battle of Stalingrad. The hill's dominant feature is the Motherland Calls, an 85-meter statue of a woman holding a raised sword, which is one of the tallest statues in the world. It's a stark reminder of the ferociousness of the Battle of Stalingrad and the monumental human cost of the conflict. The struggle for control of these and other key locations within the city turned into bloody back-and-forth battles, with control changing hands multiple times. The intensity of the urban combat phase demonstrated the lengths to which both sides were willing to go in order to claim victory in Stalingrad. By November 1942, the tide of the Battle of Stalingrad was about to shift dramatically. The Soviet Union launched Operation Uranus, a massive counteroffensive aimed at encircling and destroying the German 6th Army and other Axis forces in and around Stalingrad. Operation Uranus was a strategic masterpiece, developed in secrecy over several weeks. It exploited the weak Romanian and Hungarian units protecting the German 6th Army's flanks. The Soviets massed substantial forces, including fresh reserves and well-equipped mechanized and tank units, away from the city itself. On November 19th, the Soviets struck. Two Soviet fronts, the Southwestern and Stalingrad, attacked the flanks of the German 6th Army. Caught off guard and unable to fend off the onslaught, the Romanian forces crumbled, allowing the Soviets to push through and move rapidly inward. Within just four days, the two Soviet fronts met at Kalak on November 23rd, 
successfully encircling the German 6th Army and parts of the 4th Panzer Army, around 300,000 men in total. This sealed the fate of the German forces trapped within the encirclement. Despite desperate attempts by the Axis to break the encirclement, including Operation Winterstorm in December, the Soviet forces held firm. The trapped German forces, commanded by General Friedrich Paulus, were now cut off from their supply lines and began to suffer heavily from shortages of food, ammunition, and medical supplies, which would severely hamper their ability to resist in the bitter months ahead. After the successful execution of Operation Uranus, the German 6th Army found itself completely encircled. With about 300,000 Axis troops trapped within the so-called Stalingrad Kessel, or Cauldron, the Soviets shifted their focus from encirclement to destruction. The trapped German forces, under the command of General Friedrich Paulus, held out in the ruined city and the surrounding area, suffering immensely from lack of supplies, intense cold, and constant Soviet attacks. The Luftwaffe attempted an ambitious airlift operation to supply the encircled forces, but it fell far short of the needed supply levels. In early December 1942, with the German 6th Army encircled and trapped inside Stalingrad, the German High Command launched Operation Winter Storm, a relief attempt designed to break through the Soviet lines and save the besieged forces. Commanded by Field Marshal Erich von Manstein, the German forces assembled for this operation consisted mainly of the 4th Panzer Army, along with other elements. Operation Winter Storm commenced on December 12th. The 4th Panzer Army began its advance toward Stalingrad from the southwest. The initial days saw some success as the German forces managed to break through the weaker Romanian lines of the Soviet encirclement. This created a corridor and instilled some hope that the encircled 6th Army could be relieved. However, the German attempt ran into stiff resistance as they encountered the main body of the Soviet forces. The Red Army fiercely contested every inch of ground, and the harsh winter conditions made the operation even more difficult for the German troops. By December 23rd, it was clear that the relief attempt was faltering. The German forces had been unable to make substantial progress, and the 6th Army remained encircled. In addition, the Soviets launched a new operation, Operation Little Saturn, aiming to cut off and encircle the German forces attempting the relief. Faced with these circumstances, Manstein called off Operation Winter Storm on December 24th. By January 1943, the situation for the German 6th Army became dire. The Soviets launched Operation Ring, aimed at crushing the remnants of the encircled forces. The Germans were starved, freezing, and running out of ammunition. Harsh winter conditions added to the misery, with many soldiers succumbing to frostbite and disease. Despite the desperate situation, Hitler ordered the 6th Army to hold their positions. However, the weakened German forces were unable to offer significant resistance. On January 31st, Field Marshal Friedrich Paulus, the commander of the 6th Army, defied Hitler's orders to fight to the last man and surrendered. He was immediately made a prisoner of war. Following Paulus's surrender, the rest of the 6th Army capitulated over the next few days. On February 2, 1943, the last pockets of German resistance in Stalingrad surrendered, marking the end of the battle. The defeat of the 6th Army resulted in approximately 91,000 German prisoners of war, of whom only about 5,000 would ever return to Germany. The Battle of Stalingrad ended with a decisive Soviet victory, marking a significant turning point in World War II. The Red Army had not only defended the city, but inflicted a severe defeat on the German forces, shattering the myth of invincibility that surrounded the Nazi war machine. The Battle of Stalingrad, one of the most brutal and significant battles of World War II, marked a pivotal moment in the conflict. The crushing defeat of the German 6th Army signaled the first major failure of Hitler's military forces, dramatically shifting the balance of power on the Eastern Front in favor of the Soviet Union. For the German army and its allies, the defeat at Stalingrad was devastating. Out of the nearly 300,000 troops of the German 6th Army and other Axis forces that had been encircled by the Soviets, only about 91,000 survived to become prisoners of war. Of those prisoners, only about 5,000 ever returned to their homelands, with the rest dying in captivity due to starvation, disease, or forced labor.
The overall losses for the Axis powers, which includes Germans, Romanians, Italians, and Hungarians, are estimated to be around 800,000 dead, wounded, or captured. On the Soviet side, the toll was equally, if not more, gruesome. It is estimated that there were over 1.1 million military casualties, making it one of the most costly battles in terms of losses for the Red Army. However, the Soviets could replace their losses, whereas the Germans could not. The civilian death toll was also enormous. Prior to the battle, Stalingrad was a city of half a million people. During the battle, intense bombing and combat operations reduced much of the city to rubble, and resulted in high civilian casualties. While the exact number of civilian deaths is hard to establish, it is estimated that tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of civilians died due to bombing, starvation, disease, or from being pressed into service by both sides. The high casualty rate, including the loss of an entire army, severely weakened the German military capability, from which it would never fully recover. Additionally, the battle showed the determination and resilience of the Soviet people, bolstering morale and strengthening their resolve to resist the Nazi invaders. Internationally, the battle indicated to the Allied nations that the Soviet Union could withstand and repel the Nazi war machine and was a major factor in their decision to open the Western Front, which further stretched Germany's resources. In the grand scheme of World War II, the Battle of Stalingrad can be seen as the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany, a turning point that started the long, hard push towards Berlin by the Allied forces. The city of Stalingrad, left in ruins, came to symbolize the total devastation of the war, but also the potential for recovery and resilience in the face of adversity.